Hi there, you're 11 and welcome to your next geography lesson. Today you're going to need a pen, your exercise book, um, some varying colours and the textbook chapter which is going to be saved on class charts. It's also in this presentation, um, so if you need to you can just pause the video towards the end to see the pages, but I imagine the PDF version saved on class charts will be a lot easier to read if you can access it. Okay, so before we really get into any new learning today, uh, you finished coasts, as you know, from last lesson. So I'd like you to do a quiz. Um, I'm going to give you as long as you need up to 30 minutes or so to do this. There are 44 questions on the topic. Some are very familiar. You'll have seen them before. So it gives you a chance to retrieve and recall the answers to those. Um, but if you go to the quizzes site, enter that code on the screen. Um, you can do it as many times as you need to uh, to try and improve your mark. Obviously, time dependent because there is still um, a task I'd like you to do for the remaining half an hour. So do this as many times as you can in half an hour. Um, I'll see the results so I can hand out some achievement points. Um, what will be your last, I imagine, achievement point in geography uh, this year or in fact at, at all at Working High School. So it'd be lovely to be able to give everyone one. Could you do the quiz now for half an hour at most and then we'll get on with finishing off the final little bit of geography content before the end of this academic year. So pause the video now, get cracking with that, and we'll move on. OK, so the final part of the uh, geography specification, the little tiny bit you have not yet done, which is going to take us one lesson to do. So this really is your final um, lesson of content is linked to paper two ch challenges in the human environment and it's linked to um, topics like Rio de Janeiro you've looked at like London you've looked at um, that whole urban issues and challenges uh, topic well this is part of that and it's literally a lesson um, now interestingly a lot of what you've done today actually you've kind of come across already because in the energy topic you looked at Freiburg as an example so um, there's new stuff today. We're adding to that. We're looking at a more full definition of sustainability. But um, a lot of what's here is, is, is also a bit of revision. So anyway, copy down the title, put the date down, have a look through the objectives and we will get started. Pause the video now. OK, so to remind you, because hopefully this is a reminder to be sustainable, something needs to meet the needs of people today without compromising the needs of people in the future. Um, it also needs to usually cause minimal environmental damage as part of that. So could you copy that definition down? Um, one of the more important key terms in academic geography, because it's something that so many businesses and so many organisations out there in the real world are massively concerned with. Uh, and this is something that a geographer, when it comes to employment, this is something that geographers um, slot into beautifully. Sustainability managers, pretty much every large firm on the planet will have at least one person, if not a whole department of people uh, working on how to make the business more sustainable. Um, it's, it's a huge buzzword. It's a really important one as well. Um, and it goes without saying um, there's no point in meeting the needs of people today. If we are messing up the lives of people in the future, our children, our children's children are making their lives hard or impossible. So anyway, with that in mind, jot this down and we'll move on to having a look at what we're doing today properly. Uh, I forgot to mention, so here's an example. Um, you, you've written a definition, hopefully. Uh, if we build lots of houses somewhere, it may meet the needs of people who need houses. However, it will also fail to meet the needs of existing residents who now find themselves stuck in traffic and able to book a doctor's appointment. If we only consider the people who need houses here, we're not being particularly sustainable. Um, we're not meeting the needs of people today, but also we're not meeting the needs of people in the future as this problem only gets worse and worse and worse. Just one example. Other examples, you know, you've come across things like deforestation. If Indonesia and Malaysia continue deforesting, cutting down their rainforests at their current rate, within 100 years, they will all be gone. So in 100 years, nobody in Malaysia, nobody in Indonesia will be able to take advantage of those rainforests, either for their beauty and their environmental purpose or for their uh, resources that they can provide. That is also unsustainable. So Freiburg, we're looking at that. Uh, we're going to locate and remind you where it is in a minute. But to remind you, Freiburg is uh, a, a town, um, 220,000 people living there. It's in the state of Baden-Württemberg uh, in Germany. The city's on the confluence of the Rhine and the Danube, um, the point where the two rivers meet. 
It was originally a key trade route between the North Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. And in 1995, uh, they passed a law to construct only low energy buildings, starting to think here about sustainability. In 1999, we had the neighborhood of uh, Fauban built, uh, which was completed in 2010, um, a neighborhood that is known for being incredibly sustainable, in fact, almost militantly sustainable. And the city was heavily bombed during World War II, which gave it the opportunity to rebuild. Um, so there was an opportunity that came out of that, though, though those terrible acts, but um, the city was allowed to be rebuilt uh, to improve it. So here's where Freiburg is located. It's in the, uh, the very, very southwest of Germany, um, right on the border or near the border with France and Switzerland. Um, there we go. So there's one task I'd like you to do. You've probably got 25 minutes left now, um, at least. I'd like you to create a full A4 sided infographic on sustainable urban development in Freiburg. So what is an infographic? Well, I'm going to show you that in a minute. There are excellent ways, though, of showing factual information using images and writing. So you'll need your pencil. You'll probably need some colours as well as your pen. Yours must include writing and images. It's not an infographic if it doesn't. It needs to cover the social, economic and environmental sustainability, um, looking at how Freiburg has been sustainable in those three ways. You aren't truly sustainable if you only consider one or two of those. And it also needs to include place specific facts. Now, this isn't a, an official example when it comes to the specification but nevertheless we are learning about sustainability through an example so um, let's be as place specific as we can on this infographic now the next two slides i'm going to show you some examples so if you forget this task you can always rewind back to this point maybe take a note of the time let's have a look at a couple of examples so here's an infographic uh, quite interestingly about infographics so actually it's worth spending a bit of time just having a little look through it because it might give you a few uh, ideas about why infographics are useful, um, but also looking at the format, how they work. We've got bite-sized facts and chunks of information supported with a picture that isn't just a random picture. It's a simple, very simple little picture that goes with it, that supports the writing. You'll notice some of the key facts, the percentages, for example, are scaled up, the font size is larger, to really draw your eye to those as the key bits of information. Um, it's up to you. Uh, on top of that, how you show things. But the idea is we want visuals and writing. Now, a really good place to start if you want simple little visuals like this is to type into a search engine what it is you're looking for and then the word clip art. So let's say I wanted that brain at the top right. I would type brain clip art into a search engine and you're going to get kind of cartoony pictures. The other option you've got is a website called The Noun Project. If you go to their website, um, just search for them, The Noun Project, you will find lots, hundreds, thousands, in fact, of small little black and white images, just like these really simple little images that are gonna be really good in an infographic. Um, it's amazing what's on there, actually. You can type in some really obscure words into the Noun Project, uh, into their search engine, and they will find images of it. So give that a go. Let's have a look at one more example. Here we go. So uh, another infographic, you can see a similar format. We've got chunked information into boxes. We've got kind of key headings written in, in bold, in this kind of gray, dark font uh, color. We've then got the percentages and the key numbers highlighted in green and larger font, supported by a picture um, with the writing underneath. If you Google or search for the word infographic online and do an image search, you will see many, many more examples if you want some more suggestions, because there's loads of different ways of doing it. Um, anyway, there we go. So there's your examples. Back to the start, you've got the task you need to do is to create that infographic on the three areas. So here's an example of how we can do it with three key headings. You would have social um, sustainability, economic sustainability, and, and environmental sustainability is your three headings. And then maybe you could choose three key points for each that would go in. Um, so there we go, that's that. The next few slides are the textbook. So um, I'm just going to click to those, leave it for a few seconds and click to the next one. I don't need to say anything, they're there for you to read through if you need to. Otherwise, that's it. That is the end of what is uh, probably uh, your last geography lesson or major geography lesson. Um, if you're in 11A2, uh, you are done. That's it. Uh, and if you are in 11C5, um, you're actually doing this uh, with one more lesson to go.
which is uh, lucky you, you get geography as your last ever Woking High School lesson um, or proper lesson um, on the 15th, Friday the 15th, period five. And then I believe you're on to um, a, a, a program of really useful uh, lessons and study techniques and, and, and other things with Mr. Bunsell leading that. So with that in mind, um, if you're in 11A2, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see you, I'm sure, um, soon, hopefully. If you're in 11C5, you've got me for one more hour. Um, looking forward to that. So take care. I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye.